Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for the privilege to be able to do this. Um, I sense more of a teaching oil in the house. Uh, the right word is more of instructional oil in the house. And I'm believing the Lord that we will all receive instructions to run with. I am including myself because I'm already receiving instruction thus far as the service is going on. So I celebrate us once more. I celebrate all the men of God. Please, can we celebrate them? I celebrate all those that are streaming online, those that will watch now or watch later. Um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Prophet Bakari has just set me up and escaped. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I'll just speak what I sense the Lord will have me say. And um, I'll be speaking more from the office of a prophetic teacher tonight. I will start with a personal encounter I had some days back and um, I will push it from there I've looked at all the different angles to this in fact I had to ask God's servant that what did you have in your heart for this service and so I just try to discern what the Lord because there, there's so much to the sound of trumpets meaning it's not just one sound it could be a whole lot of things. But what exactly is the Lord speaking to us? So 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 8 will tell you that if the sound of the trumpet, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So what I understand is that trumpet sounds are significant for preparation. If the sound is not certain, who shall prepare for battle? So it's, it's not like you'd heard the sound and you started running to war. No. The sound of the trumpet is a prompt for you to start preparing for whatever is at the fore. Hallelujah. And the Bible is saying that the sound of the trumpet must be clear. It must be sharp. So in Joel chapter 2 verse 1, you will hear him say, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. What are we blowing? What are we, what are we sounding? Sound with clarity that the day of the Lord has come. So the trumpet sound in Joel 2 is to declare the day of the Lord. And so every time you are talking about the army of the Lord, the army of the Lord, either the Joshua generation or whatever it is we try to call it, we must remember that this army appears in the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then if you go down to verse 11, it now tells you that the Lord will utter his voice before his camp because his camp is very great. Meaning that the Lord will release the trumpet before his camp. Because trumpet sound is synonymous with the voice of the Lord, with that which the Lord is saying. So uh, in Revelation, when you have one trumpet sound, another one, and another one, it's not just that we just want to hear that sound, however it comes. No, there is a message. There's something that is being communicated. Hallelujah. And our ears must be opened to understand so you have trumpet sounds that rally the troops of god together you have a trumpet sound which is one of the things i sense the lord is doing here uh in our season but i'm not going to stay on it because i didn't feel that was what i was supposed to talk about but i'll just mention it in passing now one of the trumpet sound in this season is a call to maturity one of the trumpet sound is a demand for sons to arise and that's a full package because 
the food that babies eat and the food that sons eat are different. So if there's a call for maturity, that means the Lord is changing our diet. That means there's, there's a lot that the Lord is demanding from us. And that is why he's saying, grow up. Grow up. He's, he's weaning us off breast milk. That's, that's a whole lot. That's part of it. There, there's the trumpet sound that is demanding territoriality. The Lord is insisting that the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our God and his Christ. That's a trumpet sound. And that means that you cannot stay where you are in your comfort zone and just be okay. When the Lord is saying, no, in Habakkuk 2.14, that the earth will be flooded with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. So part of the, the trumpet sound is that the Lord is saying, break out of church and break into the earth. Carry my glory from the church space and invade the earth with it. That is part of the, the cry. Part of the trumpet sound to us as a church is that the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above the hills and all nations will flow into it. That's another trumpet sound. So I don't know which of the trumpet sound is resonating with you. I had a dream uh, some days back and um, usually I would just say a black man. You know, but while I was praying today, the Lord reminded me that this is like the fourth time I'm having that encounter with this particular man. So, uh, I'll say a black man, I'll say a man of God, I'll say an angel. Uh, but today, the Lord was telling me, he, he recalled when I was in Port Harcourt, when I had it, you know, um, he just gave me the different times I saw that particular person. And I changed from a black man to the messenger of God. I saw that it is one of the messengers, one of the many messengers of God that have been assigned to me that comes to me to give me instructions at critical seasons. And so this happened like four or five days ago, not, not too long, not even up to a week. I had this encounter and the man said to me, heaven is staring. And there are stirrings going on in heaven. He said, every time heaven stares, move. And immediately he said it, I was standing here and a set of persons were behind me. There was a gap between me and them. You know, and they started clapping and shouting and they were saying, we move, we move, we move. It was out of that shout that I came out. And so as I kept looking at, I'd already prepared what I wanted to minister. This morning when I began to pray, the Lord recalled the vision and said, that is for the house. That heaven is tearing and when heaven begins to stare, then you move. Now I'm going to tie this to last year, Jan, uh, this, no, 2022 December. Because I had it before I entered the new year. In preparing for the year, I just gone home to see my parents. That was after, between Christmas, New Year, that season that I had, just like two weeks, two, three weeks break. I just entered my sister's house and she was talking with me. And while she was talking, I was sitting on a couch and I dozed off. You know that kind of dream that you know that you, you dozed off like that. They just called you and I had an encounter. And they said to me in the encounter, now seasonal shifts have come. He said, when seasonal, when seasonal shift comes and you don't know what to do, is your business. And so I was wondering what, so that was that same man that spoke to me. And then he said, the pool of Bethesda. Now then, they said, seasonal shift come. If you don't know what to do, it's your business. Now this year, they are telling you that heaven is staring. That means there's a shift where once heaven stares, you see the progression, move. That means there is something to do in the season that heaven is staring things. There's something to do when heaven, look at it, seasonal shift. What happened? The angel will come to do what? To stir the waters. It's still a season of stirrings. Heaven is initiating something. And what heaven is initiating is what we must understand and come into alignment with. So the Bible will say in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, that the children of Issachar were men that understood times and seasons. In this season that we are in, the Lord is demanding for the tribe of Issachar. 
Not just people that will share high and lofty things that at times don't make any sense. But people that will take the, 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 the things that are high and lofty in the realm of the spirit and then interpret it so that the people on the earth will understand. So for example, the Bible will say, let your light so shine that men will see it. Oh, let me give you another one. He will say, he anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. So when you come to church or when you are doing your priesthood, what you receive, what you see there is your encounter or the oil of God on your head. But when you step out there, men don't see oil. What they see is your cup overflowing. So when I see your cup overflowing, my interpretation is that your head has been anointed. No more. That's why I quoted out that scripture. That you don't let your light so shine before men, not angels. So you are not going to tell them that, do you know I'm anointed? Do you know I'm this? Do you know? No, there are some things that you will not explain when some things are playing out in your life. And I believe that is partly what, you know, Prophet J.T. was trying to say. That all of these encounters that you are having should translate to something. Moses has an encounter. He's having an encounter. And that encounter, the, the encounter in the life of Moses was oil. In the life of Aholiab and Bezalel, it was kill. If you are looking at Moses, you will see him probably sprinkling oil, uh, blood, doing a lot of things but if you look at a holy app, you will see him carrying meta see it is same anointing but manifesting in different form now the lord is saying that you you now both moses dimension and a holy app and Bezali, all of them should function inside of you so that you know when as dwell army to beat your plowshares into pruning hooks. You know when to become a Jael. Hallelujah. So one of the things I sense is that heaven is staring and heaven is declaring the new. Isaiah 43, 19, he said, I will do a new thing. When I was praying this morning, I kept hearing the new, the new, the new, the new. Then I saw the word repetition written in the spirit and I heard familiar. And the Lord said, I'm breaking you out of routine. The things that you have done so much, you've repeated so much, that, see, you don't need the Holy Ghost in quote to know how to do like this and do like this and do like that for those things to be done. The Lord is saying, I'm breaking you out of the family. I'm breaking you out of the, those things that you are, you are accustomed to and I'm bringing you, you into the new. But you see, you must see it. You must see it. So my word really that I'm conveying tonight is transition. So that you are not lost. That's everything I'm going to say. The trumpet sound of transitioning. We move, we transition from here to there. The demands of movements. Those are the things I'm going to be looking at. The Lord is saying I'm doing a new thing. Transition has to do with the act of passing from one place to another. And listen and listen very well. One of the reasons why, some of the reasons why we miss seasons of transitions is because the picture is not clear. He will say to Abraham in Genesis 12, get thee out of the, this place to a land I will show you. I don't know your assignment. I don't know the oil on your head. I don't know what God has called you to do. But at times, the demand of our cause for some of us is huge. And so when you look at it, there's a tendency for you to be like Jeremiah, to say, ah, but I'm a child. So for my own, my, in my own instance, I was not saying I'm a child. I was saying that, ah, I'm a woman. And the Lord is saying, no. You know, one thing with God is that when he wants you to be a woman, he will give you the scripture. And then when he wants you to do something else that is not, he will also tell you that, have you not seen that there is no 
Either way, he wins. <laughs> I don't know if you got that. For some of us, the reason why we meet seasons of transitions is that we don't understand timing. The timing is not right. At times, the timing is right, but we don't move when the mulberry tree moves. We don't discern when the, when the priest is moving and he moves. So as I was praying this morning, one of the things that came to me was, did you know that you always assume that anytime the priest move and they camp, they will camp for some days before the next movement. That was all the, the Lord was just having a conversation with me. Is it possible that year 2020, as they come this night, as they open their eyes the next day, the priest is moving. They pack their tent again. They start moving. And that night as they are unpacking to say, finally, we have seen a spot where we will rest. As they put it down, the priest starts moving again. But there are other seasons where they will camp. And maybe for three, five years, you know it was 40 years, they might be there. And they are, they, they, you, you are used to it. But there are other seasons that today you pack and move. Have you ever packed before? Oh God, come and learn from me. I'm a moving packer. That's my reality. I remember the season where <laughs> at every dream I have, I'll see a box. Until he moved from dreamed and entered vision. In fact, one day it was so glaring that the box was on top of my bed. Like I could stretch my hand and pick it up even though I was seen in the spirit. If you come to my house, you see boxes everywhere. All, all sizes. Two days journey, one day journey, three days journey, ten days journey. Because it's part of my core. I don't know what yours is. But it is part of it. I remember after a prophetic school we had, you know, Prophet Babs had just left. That was in Delta State. And that was one of the out-of-body experiences I had that I didn't realize it was because it wasn't a dream. I saw myself standing in front of where ministers sit in the hall and there was actually something there. I picked it. I don't no need to go into all the day. Anyway, long story short after that i saw something like a greed in the spirit i was looking at it i could not the only thing that it looked like was chemistry molecular structure those of you that did you know how that thing that was what it looked like i sent a message to prophet Babs. i said see i'm seeing something so clear that i don't even understand what it is then the other part he interpreted and i just moved on and left it then one day i'm seated inside the plane and I just picked up the brochure to look at it. Maybe I picked it and turned to the back. I saw dots, airports connected. Have you seen that? I screamed because that was exactly what I saw that day. Meaning that your life move from one airport to another. To say that has not been fulfilled is a joke. <laughs> third weekend of of December last year <laughs> I entered Abuja Wednesday Thursday morning I was in Oyo ministered that day first thing on Friday morning I was ministering at Lagos at Redemption Camp finished ministering 2 o'clock by 6 p.m. I was in the airport. My flight was delayed. By 8 o'clock, I was back to Abu. Now, I did five cities in four days. By Monday, we were back at the airport going. Then my assistant looked at me and she said, hey, what's your... That, this was like on the 18th. I wasn't even away. She now said, hey, mama, um, what's your plan for Christmas? Should I keep chicken for you? And I said, hey, we still have a week now. She said, Christmas is next weekend. Is it Tuesday? Say, Prophetess Fanny, 
you preach entire Christmas. As she said it, I just say, you do this one, oh. <laughs> that was the only thing. I, I was like, what? That was the only thing. I just, inside the everyone, I just said, hey, you do this. That's the only way I can describe. And honestly, it takes only God to run the kind of itinerary around. That you are not even seeing it in the the body has configured. If I, the Lord knew, He had to show me that. Do you understand? So most when the Lord brings some of these things to us, don't don't hear the story and get lost with where I'm going to. Is that at times it's it's too big. Now I can't say that. But the first time the Lord opened the door, I complained. After one trip, second trip, ah. Then the Lord, in his mercy, withdrew and gave it space and started training me. Once in how many months? Once in how many months? Then started reducing it. Once in... So you don't even know that it's a class you are going to until you can now see that you can do like this and you are okay. And it doesn't affect your prayer life. It doesn't affect your... You know, I remember one of the times I went back home because when once I'm home, I go to the center, I gather my children, we pray. I, at times only me, I will pray. You know, I came back and I was like, hey, I miss this place and I miss my prayer. And the Lord said, my friend, carry your portal everywhere you go. Don't even enter that place in your mind like, because I've been traveling. That's why. No, 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 no. Turn the hotel room to a portal. Anywhere you find yourself, make sure that you don't step down. Was it easy? No. Is it easy? No. But I have to become more deliberate. That you are not busy dishing out the word of God and you are losing out on what gave you that platform in the first place. There must be that balance. Hallelujah. So at times we miss seasons of transitions because the time is not right. For some of us the time is right but we don't just move. Some of us don't just know how to move. The, once God tells you something, you will ask, what's the Greek meaning? What's the Hebrew meaning? What's the, what's the geographical meaning? What's the uh, European meaning? What's the Delta meaning? You, while you are busy asking all the meaning, the cloud have gone. You know what, what I call that lack of trust. Lack of faith. You move. I can track things in my life that if I had not moved the time the Lord told me to move and I didn't hear you would have really loved to hear you. You know, some of those instructions came as whispers. They didn't come as the one I described now that you are very, very sure. You just had this prompting. You just had this nudging. Just do this thing. And immediately you took that decision. All of a sudden you saw that things began to form, form into alignment. And then at times I asked myself, what if I did not do that? But if not, I did not. I remember several years ago, I went for a minister's retreat then late Reverend Oyo was around and, and I went for that retreat. That was the very first one I was attending for ministers. You know, and it was intense. Me like got back home, tired, I slept, I had a dream. And in the dream, they brought my passport and they opened it and stamped from the back, you can now apply for Jerusalem visa. Then they opened the second one and the third one and the fourth, no need to give you all the details. Uh, I just want to talk about that one. Now, in, they didn't say, they didn't stamp Jerusalem vision. They say, you can now apply. Meaning, it's your call. Whether you go or you don't go. It wasn't like they gave me a passport that was stamped. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord. They say you can now apply. That means there must be effort on your part. So cut the long story short. After a while, I decided to, you know, to go. And um, that happened to now be COVID year. God made provision. Somebody just paid for us. And everything had been sorted. COVID now came. And that was how that door shut. And after that, I didn't bother again. 
you know, in your mind, like God, you know, I tried to fulfill that word and you let it go. Then last year, all of a sudden, I just started having this smell. I can't tell you. It's, it's more of a smell of Jesus of Nazareth. That's the only way I can tell you. Maybe because I grew up in church and I've watched a lot of those movies. And so I, all of, I now just went back to YouTube and started watching Paul watching john what like i just started feeling jesus of nazareth that was how it came no no clear word and while i was watching it then the passport started showing are you not going to apply for this thing eventually eventually i eventually decided leave, let's leave all the story i don't have time for that as at when i wanted this time dollar many things have affected it it's now times three of that but one way or the other the lord made a way and i went i can tell you with all boldness that i'm still reaping the fruit of that journey of that journey live spiritual affairs there were people i met that i never knew in fact, I was telling one of the ladies we, tra we traveled with, uh, some of you know her mama B, you know, we, tr we were together all through. I was telling her that this trip, I'm, I'm going like a member. I'm not going like a pastor. Nobody knows me here and whatever. And she looked at me like, seriously? I said, yes. From Ethiopian airport, as we sat down, somebody screamed and stopped. Then I looked, I was looking at him. He said, you don't know me. You ministered at Richard Conference. You were a blessing to me. I thought, wow. She looked at me. They don't know you. That person. <laughs> Almost everything I bought was paid for by him. I just, if that's not, I wasn't, I would just turn and see that I want to pay for something and I'll see that one monitoring spirit is, mama, I've paid for it such that i didn't go with the mind of shopping i came back with a box he paid for it we're talking dollars here good dollars to my chauffeur i was pricing sofa sofa 500k so imagine 500 dollars imagine what i'm talking about when i looked at it i look at it he just said he just came from the corner pastor i said no i said the chauffeur must get from here he said do you like it i said yes but it's expensive he said pastor take there's a bag for it take that's that's like back to back with i stood in front of the church of annunciation and one lady just just looked at me and she screamed Prophet Esfan, I was like she said, oh, wait 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 Ram, call her husband hey, man, my husband we did three days fasting and prayers they are from the UK and we were on your messages for three days only to meet you here my God coming out from the sea of Galilee a set of people from America like 40 one screamed my you are you not Prophet Esfan? like if I tell you the things back to back back to back some of these people have become major stock. the brook the brook the brook i said god what are you saying he said the brook has dried up move to the widow of zarephath some of us don't know how to hear god to understand transition so you say he told me god told me he told me if you don't know how to hear god you will kill your isaac Because the God that told you to kill Isaac will still come and tell you don't kill Isaac. If you are not flexible to know when the tide that he's the one that has the key that opens and no man shut and does what to and shuts and no man open. There are times the operation of God is that he shuts doors. We only want to see open door, open door, open door. There are times that the Lord shuts the door. It is the Lord that shut it, not the devil. I 
times to get your attention. At times, he's telling you that that season of your life is over. And when I talk short doors, at times, there are people. People that had been with you for a season. At times, they are even the ones that the Lord have used to bless you. But all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you know, they, they step out. Immediately, they step out. See, <laughs> I can tell you this over and over and over and over and over and over. That I just learned it. That, oh, Father, thank you. If this one is you, thank you. Who is the next person that you are sending? But if it is not you and the devil that is trying to take help, then I stop it in the realm of the spirit. Pray that prayer and you enter rest and move. The next person that comes is greater than that one was giving you. Maybe you want it. This one comes and you're like, how? Seasons of transitions. And so let me just try to tie some things. How do you know you are transiting? Let's start with an old season. There are little things that can be indicators to let you know that you are in a season. One, dryness. All of a sudden, you just see that you are becoming dry. You see that things that, can we be real? Let me give you a practical story. How many of you have had a favorite man of God that you listen to a back-to-back on YouTube? And then a season comes, you turn it. And, no, it's not like the man backs little. But that season of feeding from that place is over. But because we are not taught these things, we linger, we try to, or that, that worship, that sound that anytime, anytime they play this song, your, your warfare mode, like me, for example, if you play, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, once you start, I will, I will switch. There was a day they played it, nothing happened. I knew that something, no, the song did not change. Because she didn't come to re-sing it. The song still carried the power. But the Lord was saying that the sound probably that will stir you into warfare is no longer this. We get so accustomed to things that every time, you know, it's like a child that you get biscuit. You now say, give me back the child, we hold it. God has to come to collect things. He keeps taking things away from us just to break us out of our attachment to things. At times, there are people you just see that that place that you used to go to, those friendship, is no longer working. Not because I'm not talking of you, you quarrel, though, you know things about, you not say, girl said this season, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. You just know that this is the person that both of you will talk every day and every time. And there was such, such a release. It might not be material, it might be material. You know, you are giving, the person is giving, you want to hear. You know, it's like David and Jonathan. Do you understand? Your hearts are neat, but all of a sudden, you just see that it has shifted. The Lord is, is indicating. At times, it's revelations. You are not receiving re- revelations the way. I had that one season of my, of my life. I've always been a dreamer. So, as I go to bed, Father, thank you. In the afternoon. Father, thank you. I don't need any effort. I don't need to do anything. Clear dreams, instructional dreams. So when people say they don't be, I I won't even argue with you. Because I can give you back to back experiences. The ones that play that exactly as it is. Then after a while, you don't even know that you've become lazy. You don't know how to engage God. You just do all the things you want to do and do like this then I noticed that I wasn't having dreams like that again. Some of us don't even notice. And in the words of James Gall, you say God changed channel. He's no longer speaking on channel 8. He's now on channel 9. So you need to tune. I started seeking the Lord and I saw that the Lord was telling me I'm bringing you to the realm of visions now. That one is not sleep you will stay like this light will flash. You will say, what's the answer? You will stay like you will see her and what's the answer? You begin to bring symbols and interpretation. He will tell you, read Ezekiel, read this, read that, with your eyes open. At times you just, an image just comes. Like a school of the spirit that was, ha, I say reading, engaging. 
when the Lord saw that I was getting established, he pulled back the dream. You understand? He gave, it's not like I lost it, but he needed to shut one down so that I could give attention to what he was revealing in that season. So when some brooks are drying up in your life, go back home, investigate, ask yourself, it's showing you a season is over. Two, discontentment. All of a sudden, you are just discontented. You are just feeling like, no, this is not it. This is not the promise. It comes with a feeling of unfulfillment. It's a sign. Watch it. When of all of a sudden you see that new tools start coming into your life, the Lord is showing you that there is something more. Then you have the transition where you are moving from here to there. And such seasons, the Lord will come to you and will say, Eat. Eat. That's it, Elijah. Eat for the journey is what? It's far. At times he will have you so upset. It's the season that the Lord starts giving you instruction. I remember when um, uh, Hilda, is it Hilda that is her name, when she won that, um, yes, that, how many marathon? How was it? How many hours? Okay, when, anyway, when she won it, won it, you know, and everybody was just rejoicing and all of that. You know, somewhere in my heart, I just felt the Lord was saying, that's how you people now, Christians, you just, hey, hey, can you do marathon like that for prayer tone? Can you understand? It just came, and somewhere in my heart, I sensed the Lord was saying, Do a hundred hours marathon, prayer tone. And I even told one or two persons, Would you, I will just pray? Well, I forgot, and we did not. Then we stepped into this year, and the Lord allowed me to have a long rest. So I was coming out of the rest. The Lord started so saying, I was asking him, Lord, the next season, he said, you will go on a hundred days prayer. He said, hundred days. He said, yes. He said, when you are ending the hundred days, you will end with hundred hours. I said, this thing is sounding familiar. I say, eh, hey, that hundred hours that you dodged that time, now I've added hundred days to the hours. You will do three hours. You keep the watches nine to twelve. I've been seeing four. You will do three days prayer, one day praise. Three days prayer, one day praise. I'm giving you a strategy till you complete it. Once you are entering the last hundred hours, do it a marathon. So I I, I got the wisdom from that they are deeply when they are doing their seventy eight and they get different. I pulled Abuja. Put Lagos, pull everybody. Oh, yeah, put everybody around the clock. Today is the 13th or the 14th day of that prayer, like joke We're on that journey. At times, in between doing when I live here now, I'm supposed to have an 8 p.m. Zoom. I know I'll be late for it. I'll send them a word, I'll enter 8 30. I'll finish it quickly. And at times, I'm eating and I'm inside the prayer. At times I'm exhausted and I'm, but the prayer is there. People are leading and I'm seeing <laughs> after this hundred days. So when he was saying, what's that sacrifice? That's, that's my own word I got to. I don't know. That was my own personal word. So from my own now, you will get to your own. Mm. I go say, ah, no wonder the Lord was demanding this hundred days. That means I should take it more seriously because the the sound that needs to come out. This is the weight of what is required. And others. Others. While I was praising and praying here in one of our meetings, still this year, I kept hearing the liberal soul can be, will be made fat. The liberal soul will be made fat. I remember two, three years back when I got that word. It came again. I say, ha, that means this year I want to give my blood. I won't sit down and be I'm pacing the spirit of God and I'm hearing the liberal soul will be made fat. Do I, I don't need anybody to interpret. That's movement I'm talking to. Some of us, the spirit of God will be talking to you. You go and ask somebody, eh, and what did he, does it mean that wanting, 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 at the end of the day, you lose it. Let me show, let me show, show, share a bitter story or experience of one of my spiritual children. 
one of the times I traveled back home, he told me, he said, Ma, ah, see this, my friend. He's into building. He did this and did, and, and just somebody just told him, take, I want to do building. I don't want to come to the site. I don't want the problem of builders. How much will it take? Let's say 100 million. Take. When you finish, so how many months? Four months. Give me key with everything I want. He had like two of those kind of jobs. So this, my son, was coveting that. I said, ah, that's a good one. Or you will have it in Jesus' name. Then I did one of those, my trip, and returned. And he said, I've been waiting for you. Somebody just called me for a job. I think it was 50 million or so. To build so, so, and so, and all of that. I said, Jesus, thank you. And instantly, I prayed for him, and I left. Now, he said, when he got home, he had a dream. And in the dream, they told him, prophet has prayed for you, and you didn't drop a seed. You will not get that. Then he came out of it. Then he said he was, he, he said, oh, not me. He was crossing the road. Then the voice said, you have still not dropped a seed. You will not get it three different encounters that he shared. Then he now came to meet me after like two weeks. He said, Ma, I don't understand. You know he lost the job, right? I don't need to tell you the end. Because as at the time it was coming, you know how you just do mogbe. Then I'm not like, it's not me. Oh. Then I now started praying prayer of mercy. But it has gone. As at that time, he was coming. Because when I saw him, I was like, hey, how far? I've not seen you since. What's going on? He said, man, that's why I came. The man is not picking my call. Want to, want to, want to. I said, what happened? Then he now narrated these three things. I'm like, so he said, man, I, don't, I did not understand. What, what don't you understand in this it's not like somebody, it's not that I told you and somebody told you, you now say that pastors they are looking for. It came to you directly. How many seasons of our lives have we lost just by not being sensitive? He said, the angels are staring. When they stare, do what? Move! Move! That's how I've moved financially. When the Lord said, do this, I did that. Then he said, go here. I went there. When I was there, he, he, this seed, so, that one, so. My three accounts emptied all. I just left my job, 2016. Lord took everything. Hundreds of thousands. For me, it was very much then. At the end of the day, they called for a seed. A thousand dollars. I said, God, if I had even known, I would have waited so that I would gather all. And now I've already given everything. You know, and I was, I was staying with someone, a son, and I told him, I said, ha, this seed, is there a timeline? I said, must we gather then? It was dollars to tell you where we are now. It was like 360,000 then. Yeah. I said, must we pay once? Before he answered, I jumped out. And I told God, you said in your word, you give seed to the sower. Prove me. Give me $1,000. I will show you that I'm a seed sower. I won't eat it. I will give it to you. How many of you have made those kind of vows? Then God brought money. He went to buy shoe. Buy hair with it. Because a season of transition was coming for me. The Lord had told me, leave your job. 2016 was when this was done. 2015 December was the last time I ever earned the salary. So how am I going to live by faith? So what are the principles? You fast, you pray, you give, you serve God, you listen for instructions. By November that year, the Lord broke me into another financial level. And I can tell you, seasons and seasons and seasons like that that comes and the Lord will demand something. And instantly, like I tell people, it's, it's not only God loves the cheerful giver that is in the Bible. So don't tell me that if you, if you are not coming smiling, God will not accept it. No, no, no. It's the version of the Bible you read. There's another one that says those that sow in tears. Some seeds, okay, Abraham was smiling when he was carrying uh, Isaac. What are you telling me? Some seeds, you don't smile when you are carrying it to God. Glory to God. 
There are seeds that the God of miracle, he has done it for me. You can dance. There are other seeds. <laughs> you know it's blood. So whether you are giving tearfully or cheerfully. But he said when you come with tears, you will doubtless. You will. He God take his reputation. He said this one that you cried so, you will doubtless come. So what makes us not to, I'm now, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking money. I'm talking of transitioning your finance. That's what I'm talking about here. That's what I'm talking about here. This year, the Lord said to me, don't teach them giving, teach them receiving. I said, okay, what are you saying? He said, when you go to church, tell them, how many of you want to be a bountiful receiver? The same words I've been, I've been preaching. I said, he said, he said, don't tell them he that gives bountifully. He said, reverse it and ask them, who wants to be a bountiful receiver? He said, when they lift their hand, then tell them that the path, the route to becoming a bountiful receiver is that you become a bountiful what? Giver. It makes more sense. So who changes the re what you receive? Are you getting it? That these seasons come with instruction. Every time people are around you, no matter what you do, when they want to bless you, it's 20,000. When they want to bless you, it's 15,000. They don't cross a line. Then you get up, you study it, and you say, no, I break this line. You give, I'll give that level. That's how you break. I can tell you practically. I was believing God for a million. Not that I've not gotten millions, but I, I was believing God that one million once I had what I was standing for. And I was declaring the word of God. One day the Lord said, give, give that one million. I said, the one that I've not received is the one that you want me to give. I came out in faith and pledged one million. Two weeks later, I got the first one million gift. Lord said, look at it. Track your experience. Don't be a farmer that throws seed and does not know what's happening. Track and ask what's going on. Change your level. Financially change it. Transition from a life of penury. Scatter seeds. Start with the first seed. The seed is the word of God. Start with the word seed. Get seed financial scriptures. That's the first seed before money. Saturate your environment with it. Even the devil knows that if you wake me up, I will quote Second Corinthians 8 9. But he became poor. That's my reason why I will not be poor. With this few points of mine, I tell the devil. He became poor for my sake. So that I, through his poverty, might become rich. I can't waste the poverty of Christ. Because his poverty was redemptive for me to enter riches. That's my only reason. Then I have other scriptures. Surround yourself with the word of God. It is the word of God that will carry you to your nest. So in a season of transition, as I try to round off, what is the bridge? He said, we have toiled all night. But nevertheless... At your word, at your word, the word of God becomes a bridge that and immediately they threw the word, the word carried them from here to there. You want to transit from a season of toiling, nevertheless, at your word, what's that word? And for us, the word I kept hearing is Micah 2.13, the breaker has gone ahead of us. The breaker has gone ahead of us. The breaker have gone ahead of us. The breaker has gone ahead of us. The breaker have gone ahead of us. The breaker have gone ahead of us. As I was coming, I was reading Tim Sheet's book on angels. And the part I read, he said he saw angels being released. And he saw them striking the earth. And they were saying, break out, break in and break through. Break out, break in and break through. And the Lord said, the breaker angels have been released. Can somebody shout break through? Shout it, I'm done. Break through. Break through. Break through. Break through. 
now just for the benefit of those that are writing when you transition from the old into the new there are eight things i got from chuck pierce that will help you to know you are in the new just to give you those words number one a new identity two new relationship three new acts four new garment of favor five new weapons six new sounds seven new anointing eight new level of authority new identity so when you enter the new you receive new identity you receive new identity if you can go to a house of kings last Sunday I ministered there and I, I, I think I've done it too in Christ Center where I described how Jesus Christ prayed and he morphed into something else, transfiguration. He was praying and he changed. He entered a new identity. When he entered that identity, Moses and Elijah came. And I told them that there are things you are asking for that will not come until you enter your new identity. Moses and Elijah did not come to Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth cannot handle that weight. You understand what I mean by Jesus of Nazareth? He's still Jesus. You understand? I'm trying to just paint a picture that he was transfigured. He changed. His garment changed. Then they go. He entered a realm where they could come. There are things you are praying for. It will never land in your life until you morph, you change. New identity. That old version of you. <laughs> hey, that old version of you will not work. I was ministering at New, U, uh, uh, Uniben. I don't know how it came out. And I said, the Lord said, that King James version of you, I will bring a new King James version of you. By the time I amplify it, you'll become a message. For translation of the Bible. I've been saying I will write this thing. I don't know why I keep forgetting. Reminds me. It just came out by the Spirit. He said, that old King James, that's KJV of you. I will bring the new King James. Then I will amplify it and you will become a message. Some of us in this new season, the Lord is demanding that you learn new skills. Immediately they ate of the corn of the land. Manna ceased. So when you transition and enter a new season, the Lord is demanding new tools. Meaning that before all you needed was a bowl and a kneading trowel. You just pick manna, go. But now he's telling you, you're not going to walk. You need cutlass. You need a tractor. Look at David. They gave him the armory of Saul. He put it on and he said, no, I've not tried this one. And he took it off and went to Goliath with his catapult but read your Bible after then did you ever see David using catapult he went to the school of kings catapult season over as a king you must learn how to wear the garment and he will say his, his, his hands his soul, he became skillful with the soul David would have continued and he would have said no Hey, it's catapult. It's catapult I've been using. Where are you stalking? Where have you stalking? That's a word for somebody. You are stuck. The Lord is telling you catapult was sufficient for the previous season. But now I do a new thing. And this new thing demands new tools. I'm someone over the years before they started talking prayer stretches when I was in the university I used to discipline myself to pray for hours the Lord helped me so over the years I was used to praying in tongues then after a while I will I will stay myself and tell myself I want to pray for three hours you know how you will I had to sit down is something wrong with me and the Lord said I want to teach you another type of prayer I want to teach you contemplative prayer I want to teach you how to sit and talk with me. So, I did not throw away tongues. I added this to that. Add to your faith. Don't get up and say, people that are praying in tongues, they are wasting their time. Eh? Are you for real? New relationships. The Lord begins to bring. I heard Reverend Oyo say, he said, when the Lord wants to help a man, he brings strong men into their lives. The Lord begins to bring some persons into our life. Some of us, we hide in timidity. 
Some people come, you say, no, you, you know, I don't like rich people. You don't like rich people. Meaning that you have removed yourself from the company of the rich. There's the way they used to. There's the way they, they, oh, you are not rich. How was Daniel able to survive in that land? How was it said of David that he led by the skillfulness? Meaning in that season, the Lord is telling you, change your garment, Joseph, as, as, as anointed as you are, interpreting dream. You can't appear before Pharaoh like that. Shave your beard, change your clothes. Ah. Some of us, the Lord is demanding a wardrobe revamp in the spirit and in the physical. I just come for a ministration from Abuja, I landed beneath the airport. I was wearing the clothes I used to. He said, I'm an apostle in the land. So it's not apostle, good heart, so that you people don't start saying, I know it's this one, it's not him. Let me just remove the one that is popular. That was ministering for, I think he's a bishop now, Elomobo, um, his name has left. Omobude. The PFN, uh, the kind of PFN chairman. He saw me. And he walked up to me. He said, excuse me. You look like Emmanuel Kore's wife. I said, no. He said in that I look like her, but he was looking at me that my height was. He said, now said, who are you? Tall, huge man with entourage. I said, I'm a minister. I said, I said it. Was it just in the physical, in spirit? No, that the way I, I dress from the ministration spoke volumes and so they had come to pick him no time for he just looked at me and i quickly carried my book and gave to him prayer is a journey that was what i did you see this story eh, is the man that told me because I, I, I didn't even know what we talked he was the one that told me he does a conference for women once in two years massive conference and he has brought the likes of Papa Ayo's wife. Just imagine the kind of ministers. He said, that's his. He said, when I gave him the book, he took the book. He looked at it. He said, this small girl. And he dropped it in his bag. Because really, compared to him, Omokekere, that's what I am. That's from years back. He said, all of a sudden, he started looking for something. Search, search, search. Could not find it. Then took his bag and turned it upside down. As he turned it, that's the staring of the angel. But the book fell. He said, hey, that book that that small girl gave me, he took the book and he started reading. He said, as he was reading, he said, no. The person that wrote this book is a praying person. He said, she did not just carry, you know how she had that things together to form something, carry from Google and write. He said, this person, he said, was feeling the fire. He was like, my God. He said, when he started praying, he said, because I pray, I'm a praying person. When he started praying for guest minister, the Lord will say, that small girl, she's your guest minister. He will pray, the Lord will say, that small girl that he, he did not have my contact, has never heard me speak. Had to trace the publisher's number from the book. In fact, it, when he told me the things, he must have heard God. Eventually, when he called me, that was the year Professor Sato was doing School of the Prophets. I was in Lagos. I told him I will not come. Smoking. I said, I'm doing seven days and they are locking us up. They said, we should not even carry our phone. I can't make it. The man said, is, is, a, is it by annual conference? I will shift it a week because of you. I said, I will just be coming from Lagos. I've not gotten home. Okay, let me talk to my husband. I told my husband, my husband said, this one that they have shifted for you, go now. Because I was looking at one week away from home. So I didn't go home from Lagos as I finished that conference. I came straight to Abuja. Yeah. It was when I was in his office. He narrated all these things I'm telling you. I did not remember. I didn't know. Because me too, I, I didn't know. I didn't even know I gave him my book. He now said, Sir. so everybody have been asking me. He said, Papa, you will talk about this minister. This particular one, you've not said anything. He said, you know how the disciples said, let's go, let's die with him. That was, he said, oh yeah, let's go and hear you. Because he has not heard me. It's not now that I even have things on, on social media. The 
person that picked me from the airport. If you see cars. And I even, <laughs> let me not say something. I just told myself, this place I've not got, let me wear skirt too. <laughs> With my skirt that I wore, she said when she picked me up, she said, hey, which can kind of baby or cool papa invite? I entered the, the hotel t- apartment, tired. After about an hour plus, they came to pick me. This time around, I was wearing native. She's the lady that was telling me, she said, the way she rated, she, she as we're entering after administration, she came to meet me and she knelt down and said, please, ma, forgive me. I said, for what? He said, when I picked you from the airport, I judged you. I looked at you, I said, hey, baby, you cool. He said, but by the time we came to pick you and seen you, I, I, I was already feeling like something. Of course, God did this thing. The church scattered. The apostle entered prophet. If you see the word of the Lord, he will look at, hey, this small girl, Jesus. Bah! This small girl. <laughs> Revival broke out in the church. The mothers all the way, and he called and said, See this small girl prayer, like place them on like one more prayer. Like I became a regular speaker there. Garments. If I had one one nonsense, he won't ask me if I'm in my recurrent wife because in my recurrent wife will not wear nonsense. And at times it's not nonsense. If it if the, the, the garment too does not have a bit of weight. I'm not preaching clothes. I'm preaching understanding the movement of God. The Esther, when it gets to the time, 12 months are required. You will soak yourself in oil until you become the oil. Don't be more righteous than God. If they have called you to the government field, there's a way they, got, they are. That's part of the scheme. You learn the language. That's not the place to do reggae. Do it inside. When you come out, become a king that are demanded of us. New acts, new weapons, I've explained that. New sounds, that's the shofar. New anointing, new levels of authority. These are some of the things you see when you step into the new. But for a lot of us, the sound of the shofar is that the Lord is saying, you have dwelt on this mountain for too long. For some of us, I hear the Lord saying that even the spiritual company that you are in presently, the Lord is pulling you out of. It is the Lord, not the devil. He's bringing you into another stream so that you can learn another part of the body. He gave them gifts, apostles, prophets, teachers. Some of us just want to stay with, with one and you are just okay. And so most of the time we are not well grounded. Because every time is only spirit you are saying. And the Lord is telling you, I want to teach you this, I want to teach you that. I'm trying not to be specific because I'm on air and not to tell you what God is not saying. This part of it, you will take it and go and find out. There are seasons where God is bringing you into new relationships. At times the Lord is telling you, go and learn from this person. At times the Lord is telling you, at times you might, you, might, you might even be shocked that you are doing two, two assemblies. Yeah, yeah. You know the order between you and God. You know how to run it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I believe I've re- received, released the word of the Lord. I don't want you to sing. I want you to, if uh, yes, you can sing, I don't want them to sing. I want them to pray. I want you to pray. Things will open. The breaker, the breaker, the breaker is breaking you, breaking you up. Breaking, break out, break up. Break, break into new realms, new dimensions. Come into the new. Some of you are hearing, come up here. Some are saying, change your circle, come into new waves. 
some the lord is saying go learn tech learn communication what is the lord telling you pray in the holy ghost come up here come up here ascend come up change navigate the new realm navigate the new realm Some of you, the Lord is saying, you've dwelt on this mountain for too long. He's telling you, arise, face the river. For some of you, the Lord is saying, your status is changing. No more decline. You are on your way. I'm hearing that song to a better place. You are in Him we move. In Him we move. We don't just live. In Him we move. There are movements when the Spirit is turned. Move. 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 I push you in the realm of the Spirit. Move. Come into the expression of God move come into the new move come into the new move come into new expressions of the spirit 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 I push you in the realm of the spirit. I give you wings in the spirit. In him we move. 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 Come into new expressions of glory. Move. Give me your back. Move. Move into the new. Give me your back. Move. Move. See me pushing you in the spirit. Move. I see Jesus. Move. Seated on his throne. Go further. I go further. New levels of instruction. To the land. New weight of glory. I see Jesus. Move. Seated. They show you where the favor of the Lord is. 
And so you come to that place of supply by the hand of the Lord. Can somebody shout, I enter the new? I enter the new. Shout.